Hey, what's going on everyone and uh, happy weekend. Um, today I have a little bit of a different video for you all. We're going to talk about knife warranties and um, why are we going to talk about these? You may be wondering. Um, just because knife warranties are all over the place. Um, it was kind of shocking for me. I, I kind of had the idea to do this after hearing a, a story on a YouTube video that popped up about uh, EMP EDC, uh, the, the Nimble X that came out. And it just got me thinking, I mean, for all these knives that I buy, and I really do, like I'm living in California, so it, I do try to buy a lot of knives on the secondary market uh, to avoid that killer sales tax and um, you know all that comes with it. But, um, but with that, you know, as a consumer of these higher end knives, I, it got me thinking to wonder, am I covered under a warranty? Or like, if I do have to get something done to the knife, whether it's sharpening it, um, any sort of like maintenance, if, if something happens to the knife, am I going to be just kind of left out in the rain? Or will, you know, that whatever that manufacturer's warranty, will that be transferred over to me? So um, I, I know a lot of people, they, they probably don't really care, but um, you know, I, the more research that I did, and I made a post on one of the groups that I belong to, just being like, hey, you know, I'm gonna make this video in a week, you know, shout out with any experience you have with using knife warranties. And the vast majority of people, haven't had to use a knife's warranty for like a manufacturer's defect, but the ones that did, depending on what the brand of that knife was, made a huge difference. Again, like experiences definitely varied. And um, so I kind of, I, I broke this up into, uh, and I'm, I apologize, I'm gonna be looking at my sheet of paper because I did not memorize all these, but um, I have kind of like a, a nice list. So these are manufacturers that doesn't matter. I mean, you know, whoever's holding the knife, whoever owns it, that company will support them in getting the support that they need to, to fix their knife. Um, the next list that we're gonna do is the kind of in between, like there's a few caveats. So although the company is willing to work with you if you're the secondary owner, um, you know, it, it's not a no questions asked, you know, replace, blah, blah, blah. Like there, there's a few caveats to that. And then the last list, I'm calling them the, the naughty-ish. Uh, manufacturers and um, you know not not horrible all around that's for sure but just a few little like nuances that everyone should be aware of so um, some of these companies I'm just gonna blast through just because I don't have like an anecdote to go along with them but um, some of them we're gonna you know kind of take a take a better look at and uh, we'll, we'll delve into it a little bit here so appreciate y'all tuning in and uh, let's let's see how it goes all right, the first company that we're gonna talk about is Curtis Knives, and I'm not, I don't have one of every single one of these knives, but the ones that I do, I will try to, uh, to pick them up. Um, Curtis Knives is the first one on our nice list. Um, whoever is, you know, wh whoever has the knife, they are going to help out with any sort of warranty, you know, returns, anything like that. They don't really get wrapped around the axle on, you know, primary, secondary, owners, etc. So they're, they're the first one, and, um, I don't have any personal experience, but I have read stories of people that have bought, you know, knives on the secondary where, you know, people just completely destroyed the blade, which that's another video that I'm going to have coming up are, you know, people experimenting with sharpening their, their blades. Um, so they're the first one on our nice list. The next one's going to be Chris Reeve and, um, you know, realizing that a lot of people will send in their Chris Reeves for spa treatment, et cetera, the turnaround time for that seems pretty good as far as cleaning up the knife, um, sharpening it, um, et cetera. So they're the next one on the nice list. They don't get wrapped around the axle. They don't need to see your receipt of where you bought it from. If you own the knife, they're gonna help you out. Um, the next one's gonna be Medford and um, they have great warranty customer service. The only caveat to that being you cannot have modified the knife, which a lot of people Devin, I'm talking to you, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll modify their knives. And um, I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. Again, people, people do that across the board. We'll get into a few other examples, but Medford, good to go. You know, you buy one of those on the secondary, you are going to be supported. And the next one, which it actually kind of surprised me was Microtech. They're another really great warranty company that they don't care. Um, I had a few people chime in on Facebook when I asked the question. A lot of people had experience with Microtech and they said that they were supported. The same thing goes for Les George. I do not have any experience with Les George. Um, I would love to get my hands on one, but their warranty, great. 
Uh, the next one's gonna be Hinder, same thing, no issue there. Secondary owners, you're covered. The next one is Olamec, which no experience on my end. Seems like they make a lot of really high-end fixed blades, uh, some folders, etc. The next one's gonna be Chavez, which this one's interesting because I kind of thought based on a few of the other experiences here that only the US made knives would be covered because you know you send them into somewhere in the US, they would be able to be fixed by the actual manufacturer. To me, that gets a little bit convoluted or it's a gray area if the knife is made overseas. If they don't have the shops in the States, that could be a huge long process. But you know, Chavez, and that includes the streets and the pen prize, doesn't matter you're the original owner or not, they will support you getting it fixed. The next one is going to be Koenig, which that's another company that I have absolutely no experience with. I'd love to get my hands on one. If you have one, you watch the show, the show, this channel, uh, you want to let me borrow one, please hit me up. I would love to get my hands on one. If I love it, I'll probably buy one, but I don't know. I haven't pulled the trigger yet. Um, the next one's going to be ESEE. So again, kind of like lower end fixed blades as far as price goes. But I mean, I have carried ESEE knives before fixed blades. They're they're awesome. They're definitely, you know, better than anything I'll ever need, but they have a great lifetime warranty as well. The next one, um, Devin brought up to me. So Bark River, another fixed blade company, they will help you out whether you're primary or secondary owner. Uh, the next one is going to be Hogue. Um, I've had a few push button auto Hogues and I've always been very, uh, yeah, kind of impressed with how they've performed. I do not own any currently, but their warranty is top notch, uh, you know, good to go. Uh, the next one's going to be Protec, which I was kind of interested in Protex because to me, Protec, like their bread and butter is definitely the automatic, you know, push button autos. Um, I realizing they do make other button locks and, and things like that. But I was surprised to hear that one because obviously a automatic knife has a lot more mechanism springs inside of it. But Protec, they will take care of you, whether, you know, you're the primary buyer or you bought it on the secondary. And I think that that's, that's really cool. Um, the next one we're looking at is Leatherman. So again, buy a Leatherman with clear eyes, secondary, primary owner. They have a 25 year warranty, which I think is kind of funny. Like I would love to hit them up with a, you know, a mutt or something like that at 26 years and be like, hey, like I know it's out of warranty, but I think that's really cool. And it's kind of funny to me that they put a year on 25 years. Like I, I don't know what I'm doing next week. So that, that's pretty crazy to me, but I, but I like that little distinction. The next one is going to be Sharp by Design. My boy, Brian Nadal. I don't have it out here right now, but um, love his mini Tempest design. I ended up reaching out to him on Instagram and I'll put his response right here. Doesn't matter. They will get you fixed up whether you are the original owner or you bought it on the secondary market, which is really cool because his knives, although they are designed in New Jersey, they're made in you know China by Riot. So that's really cool to find a us owned company that has their knives made by an overseas company that still says yep we'll take care of you because you will see a few examples here that's not always the case so sharp by design good to go buy them up um the next one's going to be uh dervish um i don't have any experience with dervish knives but the one story that was told to me um on the post that i made on facebook which kind of stuck out to me was um you know this guy he bought a dervish blade on the secondary market he posted about it because the previous owner had completely botched the blade sharpening it and it essentially dervish reached out to this guy and said hey I don't want one of my knives that I made out there looking like that. Send it to me, I'm gonna fix it. And I thought that that was so cool. Like, I mean, there are other companies that are that are like that, that passionate about it, but I, I love that. Like to me, like that's, that's the passion in the knife industry that, you know, it's certainly out there. We just don't see enough of it, but someone who saw a post of their blade out, uh, you know, just a, a picture on social media and they were like, this is unacceptable. I don't want my name attached to that looking blade. Send it back to me. That's so cool. I, Dervish, I may need to get my hands on one. Um, the last one, which was kind of surprising to me actually, was Tour Knives. And um, I did end up reaching out to them and I'll post their response right here because I do. I still have a Tour Vandal and um, as well as a Sangin Tour Admiral that I, you know, that my neighbor actually owns. Um, but uh, I do have experience with their blades and I just thought it was really funny. They're like, no, we'll, we'll support you as long as it's an authentic blade. And it got me thinking, are people out there making, you know, Tour Admiral 
copies? Because if they are, there's, I don't know. Yeah, they, they should, <laughs> yeah. If you're a Chinese company trying to rip off a knife company, don't copy tour knives, P pick something better. But I just thought that, that was funny, but that is really cool. And that made them make the, the nice list. So with that, uh, those are all the companies that I got feedback on. Certainly there's a ton more you know companies that have great warranties. Those are just the ones that I either researched, had personal experience with, or people on my post commented on. So with that, we will get to the in-between companies next. All right, so now that we're done with the nice companies, um, in, in this list that I have, it's not comprehensive. This is based on my personal experience, the knife companies that I own or have owned. I, I would say like I looked more into those, but certainly there's there's more nice knife warranties out there. Um, these are just the ones that either I knew or I got direct feedback or had personal experience with. So again, not an all inclusive list here. So um, next we're gonna get into the in-between warranties I'm calling them. So not good, not bad. The first one is gonna be Shergorov. Again, huge fan of Shergorov knives made in Russia. Um, I would say 99.9% .9 of the Shiro's that are bought in the US, not on the secondary, I purchased from Recon Ones. And um, the tricky thing about Shirogorov knives, and I really like, I want to foot stomp this point here. So if you buy one of these and, um, and, and somebody does, you know, you have a problem with it, et cetera, you're kind of, your options are limited. So if you have something wrong with this, you need to get it fixed, you know, manufacturer's defect, whatever. Recon one, so you will go through Recon one. They'll get your little, you know, the certificate from inside of the um, the knife box. Um, they'll read off the, you know, the serial number. They'll compare that to their records. Um, they do not ship knives to Russia. They actually fly someone, but they only fly someone every four months. And I actually, I got feedback. I've never tried to, you know, invoke any sort of warranty work um, on my Shirogorov knives or got them sharpened, cleaned up, etc. This one will probably be the first one, but they're not sending anybody back to Russia until October. So I kind of have to sit on my hands here a little bit. And one guy that kind of commented, he said, he had sent one in May, and again, now it is August. He still has not gotten it back yet. No notification or anything like that. So the turnaround time, and again, I think with Shiro knives, you're okay because a lot of people, this is not gonna be their only knife. They're like, man, what am I gonna use for a knife now that my Shiro is gone? Like, you probably have other knives, but it's kind of an ass pain, as I've said before. Like, I mean, just the whole logistics, you send it to Recon 1, wait for it to get on a flight, fly it over to Russia, they do their thing. You're kind of at the mercy of the, these like middlemen working it. So that, that's why I'm sure Graf, um, they kind of go in that, that in-between category. All right, the next knife that um, is kind of in-between is gonna be Riot. And the only reason that Riot is kind of an in-between or a question mark is just because I really, I don't know if you buy a Riot proper knife, what that warranty work looks like. Again, it's a, it's a company that's, you know, producing these knives in China. So presumably you would have to go back to China, which would put you in a similar situation as a Shiro, but a full, a full Riot that isn't like a Chavez Street or, you know, the Brian Nadal, like Sharp by Design Tempest that are made by Riot. I think you kind of like when dealing with Riot, you'd want to have that middleman there. So a US company like Chavez or Sharp by Design, that's kind of the intermediary there, but their name's on the knife. So I really, I don't have any information on Riot writ large. If you do, please let me know. Um, the next in between uh, company is going to be Half Face Blades. And I have a, yeah, long history with Half Face Blades. That's literally why I'm here talking to you today. Just, you know, Anyways, um, Half-Face Blades is, is kind of interesting and, and I'll post what I got from them right here about warranty work. Um, they, they'll they support you in getting any warranty work done, but unless you are the original purchaser of that knife, it's not covered by warranty. And I, and I mean, certainly when that, you know, SHPOS Gen 3 folder came out, everyone was using that thing as a, you know, a pry bar, a, apparently or dropping it the tip was breaking off whatever so you know like a lot of those guys were supported but because they got them on a drop the kind of danger bearing for me is the fact with this cab folder right so people are paying 360 dollars for it they're the original buyer they sell that for 600 dollars. the new person that buys it say there's something wrong with it something comes up 
they'll be supported in fixing it, but that new person will have to pay for whatever work has to be done. So I think that that's a very important distinction to make. So it's not bad, it, it's just not great. Um, the next one's gonna be Benchmade, which again, all you guys out there who love taking Benchmades apart and Spyderco, you know what, I'm gonna lump them together, Benchmade and Spyderco. Your warranty is voided if you take this thing apart. And that's that's so frustrating to me because like some companies like Chris Reeve, they encourage you to take their knives apart and, and clean them and tune them and you know get them exactly how you want them. Spartaco is like, if you turn that pivot, Benchmade's like, if you turn that pivot, no. Which I have no idea. Again, this this goes back to another point from all of the experience that I kind of collected online. There's no way to prove that you took apart a knife. I'm I'm just saying, like in generalities, they do make that distinction in their limited lifetime warranty that if you disassemble the knife, it voids the warranty. And I think that that's that's kind of crappy. Like there's such better knives out there that don't nickel and dime you like that. But you know, so many people are throwing new scales on Benchmades on, you know, spider codes doing crazy things. Like just do that knowing that if you ever need to get warranty work done, no one from that company is going to feel bad for you. So I think that that's an important distinction to make. All right. The last company in our in between, you know, not naughty, not nice is going to be Strider. So Certainly, Strider, original owner, you're covered. If you are a secondary or subsequent owner of that, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be covered. And if you send this thing in for spa treatment, like I was actually I was working with a guy who was uh, trying to sell an SNG. He sent it into Strider and waited four months to get it, you know, back up and running, so to speak. I, I mean, I guess it was in like rough shape before, but. All they ended up doing was cleaning it and sharpening it. Like, I mean, they didn't do anything to the finish. I think it was like a PD-1 micro melt, just DLC. They didn't touch the finish. So this thing was like scratched to hell. And like, I thought that that was kind of interesting. Like you send it, it's gone for four months. And when he got the package back, got his strider back, he was like, man, all right, I thought I was gonna get a new knife. Kind of similarly to what uh, Chris Reeve would do. So um, just to be clear about that, the other thing with Strider is they're not making production knives anymore. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be a while. Like if you have to get some sort of manufacturer's work done to it, um, I wouldn't count on it. All right, next we're going to get to the naughty category. And um, I kind of called it naughty-ish because nothing's you know completely good or completely bad although emp edc is pretty close but um first i'm just going to knock it out there so a naughty ish company crkt um that's one it is it explicitly states in their warranty it is not transferable and that's kind of scary to me especially for a lower end knife i mean when you have companies like civivi that have you know a great warranty again actually i don't think i mentioned them but civivi they're nice. You can, yeah, they have a great warranty. Um, but CRKT for being a lower end knife and then not having a transferable warranty, I just wouldn't buy any CRKTs then unless I bought them, you know, new off the shelf because I would say a cheaper knife, 30 to $50, they're going to be more apt to break and have manufacturer's defects. And if you're not covered with that, then what's the point? Like there's plenty of other companies that will support you. Um, the next naughty company is going to be EMP EDC, which I'm completely disappointed about because I have one right here, but um, kind of this was the impetus behind this entire video. Again, like I reviewed this knife, uh, Devin, you know, gave me, let me borrow his first. I ended up trading for this one. Um, you know, it's kind of like a smaller Kickstarter, but a really cool company. These knives are actually made in China, but I noticed this YouTube video of a guy who bought, you know, one of these Nimble X's, but it was DLC coded and clearly, clearly, I mean, there were, there was a couple issues with it. He ended up buying it on eBay, right? So he presumably, and I, again, there's a special place in hell for people who do this, but you know, on a drop, someone buys up as many as they can, whatever, puts them on eBay for an inflated, inflated price. And that's how they make their money. Like good on you, bro. Like get a real job. Um, but what happened to him was he ended up buying it paid, you know, about a hundred dollars more than drop price, whatever. I think it was like $70. 
got it, started flicking it for like a day and he noticed the DLC. So what they did was they didn't pre-treat the inside of this hole before applying the DLC. And so it immediately flaked off. He also had some issues with blade centering, which again, I immediately, when I watched this YouTube video, was like, oh, okay, good, mine's, mine's centered, whatever. I'm not the first owner of this knife either. So if anything happens to this knife, I'm screwed. And to further punctuate that, it's not even like EMP EDC will be like, okay, cool, like you're not the original owner, it's not covered, but give me 50 bucks and we'll fix it. No, EMP EDC hit this guy up and said, they don't have the means to fix it, which is crazy to me. So like here he is with, uh, literal paperweight now because i mean his the finish is all messed up they couldn't even be like yeah we'll throw a new blade on there like are you okay with the stone wash or whatever and oh by the way like the blade was clearly off center i mean it doesn't take you know a rocket scientist to see that it was off center they're like no that's that's straight the blade was obviously bent due to the heat treat or something like that but they literally said they don't even have the means to fix them. And to me, that is just like, it's crazy. It's one thing if you do stupid stuff with your knives and you know beat the hell out of them and they break, and then it's kind of like, well, you probably shouldn't have been doing that job with the knife. But this is just a guy like anybody else, you or me, ordered this thing on eBay because they didn't get one on the drop, wanted to, you know, they paid a little extra, but it was worth it to them. And then they just got shat on by the original manufacturer. So I, EMP EDC, I hope you watch this video help your people out. I mean, we spend so much money on knives and like the hype surrounding them. We're really pumped about like these new designs. I mean, hell, like a lot of the really big knife reviewers on YouTube completely like just were all over your ass about this thing, how great it was and have some support on the back end. If that, if you're designing a knife and that like support doesn't go into your business model, don't do it, man. Like just, just please don't. So EMP EDC, the Nimble X, I'm mad about this one because I really like it, but these guys stink. They do. That's it. The next one we're going to look at is Quiet Carry. They are on the naughty list. And um, I was kind of curious about them because, again, we have another U.S. made company. Again, we have a trend here. U.S. made company that outsources. So, the, for instance, the Quiet Carry Drift is made in Taiwan, actually, which ooh, I guess if, if you want a Quiet Carry Drift, buy one soon. Um, with that, it's frustrating when like a company that puts out a knife under the guise of like, I mean, all these things, quiet carry, drift, EMP, EDC, like they're all appealing to this like, you know, awesome market of EDC gear. Like I love EDC gear and, and a lot of a, a big part of a selling point is, you know, it being able to withstand daily use and whatever. And you kind of, I guess you take for granted that you'll have support, but one of the guys that uh, he commented on on my story with Quiet Carry, he got quite a Quiet Carry drift that the screws or something had fallen out of this thing or whatever. Since he wasn't the original owner, they made him pay for this screw set and it took a hell of a long time for him to get these in. I don't even know if he still did. I'll have to reach out to him and ask him if they ever ended up coming in. But I just think that that's, that needs to go into your calculus before you spend 300 plus dollars on a knife. Like make sure if you lose a screw, if you, you know, lose a bearing, God forbid, like make sure you can get the pieces to make your knife run or else just buy cheaper knives. Like there's such like in that nice column that I had, there's so many great companies there that support their buyers through the entire life cycle of the knife pick one of those companies because it's it's just it's not worth the ass pain puts a bad taste in your mouth you feel like you wasted money like just just avoid it um then the last one which unfortunately i don't have a huge you know story about but the last company that people commented on was rockstead again i don't have any experience with them but i was made aware that so rockstead when you buy rockstead say this is a rockstead right so i buy this thing if I go online and register the knife, if I'm the original owner, I go register the knife, that warranty sticks to me, all right? So if you are gonna buy a Rockstead knife, ask the question, has this knife been registered yet? Because if it has not been registered, then you're good to go. But if I registered this knife and then sold it to you, you're not gonna be covered. If I didn't and I sold this to you and you get online and register it, then you're covered. So that's another distinction, like, I don't know. So. Wrapping up this video, I just, 
there's such a wide range of knife warranties and, and nobody really wants to or does talk about this, but I really do think that it should go into your buying calculus just for the sheer fact that some warranties are awesome and are just above and beyond over the top people like you have makers that take pride in their knives they don't even want to see them you know in a in a form that wasn't how it left the door kind of thing and then you have other makers that just like frankly don't give a crap so before you buy anything on the secondary market from here on out, I'm definitely doing the same thing. Like if I see EMP EDC, I'm gonna report it to Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not a Karen like that. But um, just kind of like look into the warranties. It's something that, I mean, it. I don't know. It, it To me, like I equate it to like your, you know, you, you get a flat on the side of the road and then you realize you never learned how to change a flat tire kind of thing. Like do your due diligence. You're spending a lot of money on knives. Look at the warranty, write these companies, ask them that question because you don't want to end up like that EMP EDC guy who's out, let's say $360 has a really nice looking paperweight that every time he looks at it, he probably gets pissed off because I know I would. So with that, appreciate you all uh, tuning in. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that this video, you know, in some form helps people make educated decisions on the knives that they purchase. Um, have a few other videos coming up. I have a long list of reviews that I want to do, etc. So I uh, appreciate you all tuning in and we will see you next time.